thank you for doing the interview today. Yeah, no problem, Susie. What would you like to talk about? Well, I'm writing a new book. It's called The Art of Creativity, and it's the habits of highly creative people. And I've got a whole chapter in there on meditation. And I would love to get some fresh, direct information from you on um, some stuff around meditation. So I've got some questions to to go through with you, if you don't mind. Oh, and then I'll use no that problem. as a basis for this chapter. So I want to write in the chapter about meditation, specifically TM meditation. I also want to talk about the foundation as well. I'm also uh, interviewing Bobby as well. So from you, I, I'd love to ask you about, I know you've been at meditating for, is it 46 years? 46 years, uh, July 1st. Amazing. And you're regular twice a day. Never missed a meditation twice a day. You've never missed one. Wow. No. Can I ask you, like, what is your pattern for meditating? When do you do it? How do you know when you're going to start? Do you do the same times each day? What's your pattern and routine? My pattern is, um, my pattern is um, to wake up in the morning sometime and take um, some coffee and a few cigarettes <laughs> and then meditate. Right. Many people start meditation and, you know, so-called bad habits drop away naturally. Yeah. Me, I started meditating and I did quit smoking for 21 years. But all through that time, I had a deep love for tobacco. And I finally went back to smoking and I love it so much. And for me, it's part of the art life. Mm -hmm. Coffee and cigarettes um, uh, just go hand in hand. Um, I came, it comes from, you know, something I must have thought about, you know, as a young youngster and uh, hooked it into the art life. So mm -hmm. I have a, a coffee and cigarettes and then I meditate. Then I go about my business. Um, and then in the afternoon, sometime before dinner, mm -hmm. I meditate again. Mm -hmm. So there's no specific time for your afternoon meditation? No so really specific time, uh, but it usually falls into somewhere around, I'd say, 6, 6 p.m. Yeah, yeah. So how, I, I, you see, a busy guy like you, how, how come you've never missed it? That's a very strong motivation you've got clearly, to do that, keep that up for all those years? I was told early on the most important thing we can do for ourselves is meditate regularly. There is a chance to go many steps forward each time we dive within. Mm -hmm. And it's what they could say, money in the bank. It's very, very good for the human being to transcend every day. So I heard the most important thing we could do is meditate regularly, and I took it to heart. And I found out that it's not difficult to not miss. You just, you just do it, it's part of the routine. And uh, any time I've been someplace and that there was no place kind of um, quiet or nice to meditate, I'd ask somebody, and they, they maybe don't never even heard of meditation or they're they don't meditate but something they say oh let me find you a nice place and they you know get me in some little quiet place and protect me while i meditate it's just been that way and as you know you can meditate anywhere noise is no barrier one of the best meditations i ever had in my life was in a small room and um it was in a brick building so to my right was a brick wall. And on the other side of the wall was a, a sidewalk. And they were jackhammering the sidewalk apart while I was meditating. And I was just filled with bliss. The, the jackhammering was just knocking bliss into me. So it's, um, it's just um, part of my routine. And tell me about the link between creativity and meditation for you personally how did when did you notice that there was this strong connection between the two did you well, know straight away we are you know human beings um i think most everybody has 
some amount of common sense. Common sense. And so common sense tells us that it would be beneficial to creativity to have a technique that would allow you to dive within, transcend an experience a field of unbounded creativity. Common sense would say that could help the individual's creativity. Infuse, every time a human being transcends, they infuse some of that, trans, what's in the transcendent. Pure consciousness with qualities. The qualities of this pure consciousness are intelligence, creativity, happiness, known as bliss, love, universal love, which feeds personal love, energy, power, and peace. You get wet with that every time you transcend. So what happens uh, happened, you know, for me as I um, started getting happier inside, uh, solutions to problems kind of came more easily. I got more energy to do the work. I got happier in the doing of the work. I got um, a feeling of liking people more. I got a feeling of seeing a bigger and bigger picture of life emerging. I got more self-assured. I got um, a feeling inside that a life was beginning to be more like a, a fun game than a torment. And also, as you know, every time you, you transcend and infuse these all positive qualities, the side effect is negativity starts to lift away. Just like when you ramp up light, darkness lifts away without trying. So people, you know... Um, who are suffering with stress, traumatic stress, anxieties, tensions, uh, depression, sadness, fear, need for revenge, hate. Um, this negativity is eating us, you know, and, it, and then we broadcast that out. So we affect our environment in a negative way. We're poisoning ourselves with it. Now, they say, Maharishi says, negativity is just like darkness. So you say, wait a minute, what is darkness? It's nothing, it's just the absence of something. So you start ramping up this light of the transcendent, automatically negativity starts going, just like darkness goes in light. So it's so good for the human being, serves the work, serves the life. And it's real, it's, it's, we're built for transcending, and we just need a technique that works. And Maharishi revived that technique, Transcendental Meditation, ancient form of meditation that truly works. And the beautiful thing is it's easy and effortless. So a 10-year-old child can do it. A 110-year-old you know, fellow can do it. And, um, and they just sit back and watch things get better and better. Who taught you, David? A woman named Gail Miller. Mm. July 1st, 1973. And what? 11 o'clock in the morning. What got you there? What was the story to get you there? The story was for me, um, uh, I think the thing that turned things around, first, I didn't, I heard about meditation probably because of the Beatles. Yes. But I had zero interest in it. I thought it was a fad, a waste of time, and it, I just wanted to work. Mm -hmm. Then I must have heard this phrase, true happiness is not out there, true happiness lies within. And that phrase, I always say, had a ring of truth to it for me. But they don't tell you where the within is, nor do they tell you how to get there. So it was a very frustrating phrase, but I felt it was true. Then I thought, wait a minute, maybe this kind of med this meditation 
just the word meditation, a generic thing, maybe this meditation is a way to go within and find that happiness. So then something happened. The stars must have turned a little bit. I got like a thing where I couldn't, I just was, uh, I was reading about things and asking questions and looking into this, looking into this, find out there's so many different types of meditation. Nothing I was hearing about sounded right for me. And uh, then uh, my sister called one day and said she started Transcendental Meditation. I liked what she told me about it. Um, and I heard a change in her voice, more self-assuredness, more self, um, more happiness. And I said, I want this thing. And I went and got it. Wow. Amazing. And, and were you hooked from the start? From the get go. I was very fortunate to have um, an incredible meditation right off the, my first meditation. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe it. It was so, so, you know, uh, just waves of bliss and, and an experience that I had not had, well, I had had before, and that's another story. But anyway, <laughs> um, I was like, I was just blown away by, yeah. you know, by, and I, I, from, so from the get go, now I remember when I had that experience, I was um, maybe, I don't know, a year before that or something, I was in a, a chair daydreaming and I was daydreaming along and uh, boom, I got this white light and a blissful feeling. And I said, what was that? And so I recognized that from, you know, my experience with learning Transcendental Meditation. So I'm, human beings can have, do transcend without a technique. They say many people transcend before they go to sleep. They're, in, they're, awake, they're awake and they haven't quite gone to sleep. And in between these states of consciousness, waking, sleeping, and dreaming, there's an opportunity to slip into the gap and transcend. And so it's a natural thing. But when I was daydreaming and I had this experience of transcending, I would have loved to have that again, but I didn't know how it happened. And I could, didn't know how to make it happen again. So this technique of transcendental meditation means that any human being who gets this technique can sit down and transcend anytime they want. It's so beautiful. And every time you transcend, you get more of this consciousness growing. You're expanding that ball of consciousness. You're making the subconscious conscious in enlightenment. That's another word I could think about, enlightenment. Is it possible? Do human beings have this full potential? And, um, and so the thing about transcending every day is you are unfolding your full potential as a human being. It may take a long time. It may take a short time, depending on how much you start with but you're unfolding your full potential as a human being. And this is how it's done. Always throughout time, this is the way it's been done. And life gets better. Maharishi came out and said, the individual is cosmic and bliss is our nature. And you look around in the world and you wonder, um, how can that be true? But um, it is true. And I guess because of all the resources and energy you put into the foundation to teach people meditation, try and get many more people learning it, that's a recognition of that meditation can make a change. And if we were all to start doing meditation on a regular basis, we have got the opportunity to shift our world into a much better place. It's absolutely true. And um, so it's again common sense if you get rid of uh you can get rid of the negativity and the suffering um you get a happy world where people don't want to hurt one another they want to help one another where solutions to problems come more easily um inventions come 
Uh, well, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you about ideas and where ideas come from, because it's a, it's a playground for getting ideas. And, and in your book, you talk about deep, deep diving to get the big fish. And yes. I, I, um, I was talking, uh, Paul McCartney, who I know is a good friend of yours, he was telling me that when he was out in India with Maharishi, he, when they were just learning, all the Beatles were just learning their meditation for the first time, he went to sleep, had a dream, woke up, with the lyrics fully formed for one of his most famous iconic songs. And all he had to do was go and reach and get a piece of paper and write it down, like it was fully formed. And yeah. this came through, and they were at their most prolific stage when they were out there in India, writing like 45 songs in a very short period of time, the really big songs. Um, during that time when they were learning meditation out in India with Maharishi. So I wondered, I just wanted to get your, your, um, sense of how ideas come through in this meditation process um well there's a bunch of things do you mind if i take a smoke i'd love you to okay good thanks <laughs> <laughs> um john lennon supposedly he was at, and rishikesh there at the time you're talking about yes um he said, Maharishi, sometimes when I'm meditating, I get down in there and I get ideas, you know, uh, what, what, what um, are your thoughts on that? And Maharishi said, okay, so if you're in meditation and you get um, some idea that you're just loving, gently come out of meditation, write it down, and then go back in. And so, um, you know, Amarishi would say, you know, you don't meditate to get ideas in meditation. You meditate to expand that consciousness. So when you come out, you've got more of a chance of catching ideas and catching them on a deeper and deeper level. So, um, but it's happened. So interesting. This, huh? this is so interesting uh, where ideas permeate from, you know, within the mind. If it's just the mind, where, where do these things come from? And yeah, I picture, work? you know, the, everything, everything comes from the unified field, that field of pure consciousness. Everything that comes from there. There's trillions and trillions of ideas, and they are like fish to me. You can catch them. And sometimes you catch one you love. So it's, it's, and, and the thing is, the, the bigger the ball of consciousness, the more opportunity to catch fish. And like I said, catch them on a deeper and deeper level where there's more information in the idea. Mm. So, so you talk yeah. about falling in love with ideas. And what I'm wondering is, you're going to have a lot of ideas with your active mind. How do you, how are you listening to your intuition to know which ones to follow? A love. Love. Yeah, you love. love this idea and you don't love that idea. It's a good idea, but it's not for you. So um, it's a feeling, would you say? It's a feeling. Yeah, you love this particular idea. I always say for me, I like, I, I fall in love with ideas for for like for cinema say for two reasons one the idea itself and the second thing is how cinema could you know realize that idea so um you know you just you just so um, Dave, do you get an idea and then you get a visual or what is that process no, no. you um you're going along there's no idea no, no idea, no idea, and then boom. It's like I, you could say a big movie screen in your head, in your brain. This idea comes on the screen, and you see it, you hear it, you feel it, you know it all at once. And then you go and write it down. And you write it down, I say, with words so that when you read that, those words again later, that idea will come back in full. And it's amazing how many words sometimes it takes to um, 
you know, described that idea, all the things that came in just like an instant. So you write it down in such a way that it comes back when you read the words again. And do you journal? And do you do any mind mapping when you're working out films? Mind what? Like a mind map where you map ideas almost like a neural network. No, I right. don't do anything like that. I write them down. I, 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 I write them down so I don't commit suicide later having forgotten the idea. Yeah. I've forgotten probably two or three major ideas and it may make you sick, it just horrible. Write the idea down. You say, well, I'll never forget this idea. Uh-uh, you can forget them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you get something you love, you owe it to yourself to write it down right away with these words that will bring the idea back when you read them again. You can't just put a few words down that make sense to you at the time because you'll read them and say, what was I talking about? Yeah. And you got to write them down so that when you read them again, oh yeah, I remember that idea. So do you carry a book around with you all the time to write stuff down? Or No, you... I have these yellow pads and I write them down in a yellow pad. So are you always walking around with a yellow pad in case you get some brilliant? They're close by, you know. Yeah. I don't carry one with me all the time. Yeah. And do you journal at all? Like keep it diaries no. or no? No, no, no. <laughs> Amazing. Because my, my book is about, what, what would you say are the habits of, of, of creative people in general? I think they're all different, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I'm sure, you know, everybody's got a routine and everybody catches ideas. Mm. And there's ideas for all the different walks of life. Mm -hmm. So you could be, you know, a fisherman and be out fishing and say, wait a minute, and develop a new kind of hook or a new um, uh, little um, rig for the boat. And um, so ideas are coming that serve your life, serve your work mm -hmm. uh, for everyone. And you talk about setting up your space as an artist and a creative, mm. so that you have to have a place, whether it's a writing studio or... You have to have a setup. A setup, and, that's what you said. And then again, it's common sense. If you are working with wood, you need a place to work with wood. And you need tools. And you need, you know, if you're, uh, you, you need a setup so that if you get an idea for a chair, for instance, you, you're on the screen in your mind comes the picture of the chair and you're writing down the idea. You say, okay, it's made of this kind of wood. It looks like this. You draw a picture of it and it has this metal here and it has this wood here and it has this thing there. And then you gather your materials and you go to the place where you have a wood shop and you can make that based on the idea that came. Mm -hmm. And so with all the different things, you try to get um, a place and tools to realize the ideas that come. Mm -hmm. And what about self-sabotage talk of, that a lot of artists have? You may not have experienced this, but I'm you know, talking about writer's block or I'm not good enough conversations that people have in their heads about their artistic craft. I would tell them to start transcendental meditation right away because I don't think um, there's, I know that there's a thing called writer's block, but just that term uh, if it becomes kind of a reality, if you believe in that term, you could maybe uh, get writer's block. And um, uh, fearing it, you would bring it to yourself. Or I don't know if that's true, but um, all it means is the ideas are not coming. Uh, you are out fishing. Your hook is in the water. You've got bait on it, but you're not catching anything today. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it just means that uh, you just keep fishing. You have to have patience. 
Mm-hmm. I always say a desire for an idea is like bait on the hook. And you're desiring ideas and you're meditating regularly, they're gonna swim in. They're gonna come, you're gonna start catching ideas. They may not be ideas that you fall in love with, but you're gonna start catching them, and then one day you're gonna get an idea that you love. And I always say it might just be a little fish, a little part of a whole story. But you maybe see a character, you know that character, you say that's an important character. That's an important fish I caught. You write it down. And then when you've got that one, you, you, it's now a more bait on the hook. And so you lower it in the water and a, a school of fish will come that know that fish that you love and connect with it. And you'll bring in more and more fish and a, and a story, a thing will evolve or a painting will evolve or a chair will evolve or a lithograph or whatever. You gotta, you know, just have patience and meditate regularly. And can you talk about your processes? I know you're an artist, you, you create paintings as well as other things, films and uh, music. So can you talk about your process for painting, how that? My, my process for painting is, um, you know, desiring warm weather because I paint outside. Right. And we've had strange weather lately and it's not been conducive to painting. And, but um, painting is, you, uh, with every single thing, it's the same. You need an idea to get you out of the chair to start something. And so you get an idea for a painting, you start a painting. And for me, once it's started, it's a process of action and reaction. And um, it builds from that. Once it gets started, you make something and you react to that. Oh, that's not, that part is good. That part has got to go. And then you destroy that part. And then you say, oh, that's nice, but then it leads to a new idea and you put that in. No, 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 that's not right. Then you destroy that and you go to, oh, this, this, I got an idea for this, I got it, and we put that in. And then something starts happening and the thing, you know, eventually completes itself. Action and reaction. And this thing of intuition. Yes. It, I always, number one tool for the artist and any other person. Intuition, knowing when something is not correct and seeing a way to make it correct. It's a knowingness, a feeling thinking at the same time. It's a feel and a think at the same time. It's a very, very, it's not instinct. It's intuition. Instinct is I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat something like this food. Um, Intuition is a higher thing, a knowingness. And it, it's our big friend. It's interesting and when you, you, when you transcend every day, you're going into this field of all knowingness. They say, know that by knowing which all things are known. Think about that phrase. Know that by knowing which all things are known. All things. That's the transcendent. And you know it by being it, by infusing it and becoming it. And it's us, it's the big self with a capital S. This is the way it's been throughout time. It's there for us. I need a, you need a technique. And transcendental meditation now is proven through 50 years of research and all kinds of stories and life changing, you know, you know. Uh, stories Um, it's the real thing and it's here in its pure form now like Mara she says make hay while the sun shines get this technique and walk away from suffering and into a great life I I wanted to I wanted to ask you what you thought about um, is is TM meditation future proof because our experience as human beings on this planet is very diff- different to the generation before, and the next generation will be different to ours with 
technology and being constantly switched on and, and stimulated with all sorts of technology. And we're getting smarter with mind technology. We're getting smarter about understanding brainwave states and what that is and all the rest of it. And, and mapping what happens when we meditate to our brainwave states in, in terms of the physics of brainwave states. So I'm wondering how future proof is this still going to be a thing that's useful in 20, 30, 50 years time? This Vedic science that Maharishi revived is both ancient and always modern because it's the real thing. And I always thought that, you know, modern science would be, would, you know, come along and verify Vedic science. And it's more and more happening that way. Mm -hmm. And I would just say for the quantum physicists, like Dr. John Hagelin, the smart quantum physicist would look deeply into Vedic science. There's objective science, and that's you know what most science is that we hear about, but Vedic science is subjective science. And so it happens in the human being, but these things that happen will be um, verified by objective science up to a certain point. And uh, the two are coming closer and closer together now. And so it's a beautiful time. And the thing that will happen you know, is, is we, to watch out for is people fiddling with the technique, saying, oh, we don't need to do this part anymore. Or, That's not important. And we'll change this. People don't like that or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, keep this thing pure. You meditate the way you were taught. Don't add anything to it. Don't take anything from it. Keep the technique pure. The teachers of transcendental meditation have this, you know, obligation to make sure the teaching is kept pure. That way it will last for the next generation and generations to come. You don't fiddle with something that works. And as soon as you do, if you look back in time, Great techniques have been lost, you know, because people fiddle it with the master, the teacher that brought it is gone and people unenlightened fiddle with it. And pretty soon it doesn't work and it falls away. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the teachers from, um, I, I live in Ibiza and I wanted to ask you about music. And I, I know there's a, there's a story and a myth and I want to clear it up. Now I've got the chance to talk to you directly. If you've been to Ibiza, I heard that you made a track that was put out and mistaking, mistakenly, it was referenced as a track by someone like Underworld, and everyone was raving about this. And, and then later, it was like, well, that, that was a track from you. It was ju it just been sort of mis mislabeled or something. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to find out your Ibiza story, because I'm from Ibiza, and I'd love to know what your Ibiza story is. Well, I um, got to know um people from sunday best recordings um they are uh, london based you know yeah. um uh, music i think it's rob 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 de bank and ben turner rob de bank yeah yeah and so uh, ben and rob uh, became friends and um so they go to abisa you know every year and um do a festival there i'm not sure what they do but they go down there for the festival whatever the music and so um, my friend and engineer in the studio, Big Dean Hurley and I made a song called Good Day Today. And I guess it got to Jason Bentley from KCRW, you know, radio station in LA. He, he's the one I think that started the story. He thought it was that group that you mentioned yeah. and um, loved it and played it and then found out it was, you know, not them. It was, you know, something we did. It was so, you, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Brilliant. Brilliant. And what are you up to now? I, I know we've got to finish in a moment. Um, what, are you, what, what are you up to now artistically and creatively? I okay. am work, working in the wood shop on some lamps. And I've got a couple of paintings started. I'm um, also busy trying to catch ideas. And... Um, yeah, I'm working on uh, an intro for Donovan 
I guess Donovan will be doing something in Scotland and he asked me to do an intro. So I'm doing a video for him. Mm -hmm. And um, so whenever, you know, I'm asked to do something like that, I get involved with uh, these programs um, that are now available to us in this digital world. It's so fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's truly getting to the point where if you can think it, you can do it almost without leaving the house. Yeah. So it's really an incredible time. It's an incredible time to be a creative artist. Yeah, it really we is. Can, we can all produce movies, albums, whatever from our, from our technology. It's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. It's really great. And it, yeah. Incredible. David, how, I, long have you been, how long have you been meditating? Um, well, I I had a, a meltdown. I was running an entertainment PR agency in London. I had a meltdown and I was really losing it. And uh, someone left me a, a TM teacher's card and said, I suggest you you contact this person and learn TM. And I learned, and, and my, like you, my first meditation was incredible. It was like someone had let off fireworks in my head and all this stress was released. And I had this mental experience that like I had never had before and I knew this was my thing and I tried a few different other types of meditation but when I did TM it talked to me it was really amazing um, a year ago I was diagnosed with brain cancer and they gave me six weeks to live and they said you know you're, you're not going to make it I knew David and my next book is on intuition my intuition jumped out and said you're here girl <laughs> you know you're not going anywhere and I knew so I lent in right into my meditation practice and I was at the hospital meditating so deeply. The doctors were going, what are you doing? And I said, I'm meditating. They were kind of smiling at me. <laughs> but then when they, they gave me my scan result, I had three scans. The first scan was you have this enormous brain tumor. This was exactly one year ago, a week now this week. Um, the second scan, it had shrunk. And the third scan, it had completely disappeared. And my techniques was TM meditation. And I told the doctors this. And they obviously it didn't fit their paradigm. And they were like, oh, what are you doing? And I said, I'm meditating. This is what I do. And I'm going to heal myself. And they said, I'm hungry. And then a few weeks later, that doctor presented to me my scans. And he said, we're not in the business of miracles here, but this looks like a miracle to me. Isn't that the most beautiful thing? And here I am, David, a year later, feeling fantastic. I'm writing books. I'm writing this book on creativity. My next book is on intuition. And the one after that is on creative visualization. So it's all about mind technology because I believe, oh, and also when I was going into the scanner, my intuition came in and said, we're going to give you this storyline and we're going to ask you to write a book to inspire the world about healing potential the fact we can heal yourself because you're going to have the true story that you healed yourself of a brain tumor which was the size of gigantic size and i did do that so i'm walking proof that miracles are possible and the power of the healing of tm meditation i'm walking proof you know and now i'm writing a book about it i couldn't be more excited and i i, I i'm so thrilled you know i've been working a lot with deirdre for years i'm, I'm a big supporter of the foundation i've run several courses here from the David Lynch Foundation from Deirdre who's who's got in teachers here and we, we've created a community of people here who are learning TM and so we have a TM community here on the island which is fantastic which is what I've always wanted and um, I, I'm a big you know I'm a big believer that we can change the world you know I'm an optimist you believe I, it. Yeah. I think we change the world and that's why I, I'm delighted that you 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 know it's so wonderful that you gave me an interview today I know your time's very precious and I want you to know I'm utterly grateful and really appreciate it. <laughs> well, it's great talking to you and you've got a great story to tell. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I've connected with Russell best. as well. Russell gave me a wonderful interview and Paul's a friend. So the three of you I know are like the three banditos of uh, like TM meditation uh, exponents. So I, 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 I'm so grateful and it's a wonderful to have the interview. So I look forward to putting it in the book. Fantastic. All the very best to you. Thank Get the whole of Ibiza meditating. Yeah, and that's that's the intention. Yeah, I, I mean, at all the festivals we want to get you know the, the TM as a as a 
because you know um, Ibiza is no longer drugs clubbing and people out of it it's actually the reverse now it's a it's a place where there's a lot of meditation going on there's a lot of yoga and sound healing people are getting very into the technology at mind technology here and we're kind mm. of at the, you know we're, it's a bit like California it's very it's it's, a, it's an island have you ever been never been okay it's an island that's it's similar to California in the sense of mm, you know leading edge thinking high consciousness free you know conversations about consciousness and and raising our game so it's a wonderful place to to be tell them they can do whatever they want but add transcendental meditation to it yeah make sure they're doing transcendental meditation and then if they want to do this thing over here or that thing or that thing fine but get the get this technique that truly gets them to the transcendent yeah. the deepest level Mm -hmm. underlies the whole field of relativity eternal level it's all there yeah. and they got to get there to experience that infuse that grow in that and so they need this technique and they'll they're, they'll never be sorry they got it they'll unfold their full potential they'll walk away from suffering all kinds of great things can happen yeah my life is different from tm i mean a wildly different and improved exactly mine too <laughs> <laughs> David, thank you. Have a gorgeous Absolutely. day ahead. Gorgeous connecting oh. with you. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you, Susie. And same to Mike. Thanks to Michael as too. Okay. Thanks. We'll Have see you later. See you okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.